Hey everyone, it's Talia from Zart and today we're going to be exploring texture using gel plates. So, gel plates. This is a gel plate. It is used for printing. If you haven't used one before, they're super fun and they're great for exploring texture because they will pull up every single detail of whatever you press onto them. So for today's activity, we're going to be exploring texture and creating multiple prints and then using those prints to create a collage. So our source of inspiration is nature and we've got a variety of different leaves here. So these leaves, these leaves here are skeleton leaves and if you notice, they are really beautiful, light, and have some great texture in there. We've also got some other leaves that we've collected. So here we've got a gum leaf, which has a very iconic shape. If you're in Australia, very easy to find. And we've got some other leaves here. So these are our natural leaves, which we do have, and they've got some really lovely texture here. You can see the veins of the leaves, but you can use pretty much any leaf you find. So you can go outside with your class, collect some different leaves, explore the textures as you're picking them and use them for this project. But I'll be using a combination of the leaves that you can see here. So for your gel plate, we are going to be using acrylic paint on the plate. So I'm going to be using these sets of Australian colors. Uh, and colour can be a really important part of this process, thinking about what colours work together and what might look nice together. So I'm sticking to some more, not dull colours, but some really nice earthy tones. And I'd say they're more of a cooler tone colour and I'll be working with these. I think it's nice to have a select amount of colour in some projects. So students might stick to the same sets of colour or choose their own sets to work with, but you can use whatever colour you like. So for the gel plate, you don't need too much paint at all. So these bottles are also very handy because you can just apply a small amount of paint onto your plate without having to worry about too much overflow. Now with your gel plate, you can either stick to one color and roll that on, or you can do a combination of a few colors. So I'm going to include a little bit of color onto my plate and mix these two colors together. Now, if you have a whole lot of colors together and you mix them on your plate, they will all start to merge and make one color. So just be aware of that. So with our hard roller, roll that over the top. And as you'll notice, there's some really nice pattern happening there. Now you can stop and work with that pattern or you can continue to roll all of that paint across the plate. Now, as you can see, that paint is spreading quite nicely. So you don't need to add too much paint at all to go across your plate. Just a little bit goes a long way and you can add as you go. So once you've got all of your paint nice and rolled out, what we can do is layer some of our leaves over the top of that plate. Now you can use a combination of different leaves or you can stick to the one type of leaf, which I will do just for this print here. So staying with my skeleton leaves and placing them across your plate. Now just be aware, whatever touches the plate, you will get an impression of. So even if I put my finger on the plate, you can see that my fingerprint is there. So a very, very fine process, which will pick up every single piece of detail. Now cartridge paper is all that you will need for your print. Place that over the top of your leaves. Now try and match everything up if you do want it to be nice and square, but we will be cutting up these papers later on to use for our collage piece. So not absolutely necessary that everything is completely aligned. As long as it is on the paper, you are doing okay. So I like to use my hand to go over the sheet of paper, making sure that I will pick up every piece of texture that is on that plate. Peel that off and you can see that you get the outline of the leaf because we have left our leaves on the gel plate. But once we peel those off and be gentle as you peel off those leaves, you'll notice that there is still some paint on the plate and you'll have a really nice impression of your skeleton leaf. So we can pull a second print once our leaves are off and these leaves can be used again in future prints too. So grab another piece of paper same process, placing that paper over the top. If you want to clean off your roller, then I like to roll my roller over the piece of paper. So then your roller cleans 
and your gel plate will clean as well with most of that paint coming off. So my roller's clean, peeling that off. And as you can see, you get some really beautiful textures of those leaves. Now for this particular project, I would recommend doing at least four prints. So exploring those different leaves, exploring different colors. And then once you have at least four sheets of prints, then we can go on to the collage. Now this will dry very quickly because the paint is so thin. So I'm going to stack that on top of the other print, but put it in your drying rack in about five minutes, your paint will be almost dry assuming that your students have done a very thin amount of paint on your plate. So I'm gonna have a bit of a play. I'm gonna have some fun putting some different leaves on my plate, printing them, trying some different colors, and then we'll have a look at my prints. Okay, so now we've created a few prints. So we've got our first and second prints. So our second prints are the ones that tend to pick up most of the textures. But you can see there's some really lovely texture here. Even these ones that haven't picked up the texture but have just picked up the outline of the leaf. That's definitely something we can use and play with. And we can even take some of these skeleton leaves that we have used in the print and collage them back into our work. So we'll be creating a collage out of these prints. So what we need is a base for us to work on. So I've got a piece of brown craft card here, nice and thick, something that will hold the weight of multiple pieces of paper being laid over the top of each other. And we will be just using a glue stick to adhere our pieces onto. Now for this collage, what you can do is choose sections of your work which you wish to cut out. So you might want to focus on one, specific leaf and I'm not being too precious about cutting my lines super straight. I think it can look better to have some lines that are a little bit irregular, add a little bit of interest to the work. So I'm going to pick and choose some areas from my prints. So using a combination of some of those different colors, some of those different prints together. Even having some of these lines in there I think can look quite nice. But what I'll do is start to pick and choose some shapes from my prints and then I will look at just arranging the shapes and seeing how I can create my composition. So I'll have a bit of a play with cutting out and collaging and then we'll come back and see how we can fit all of these pieces together. Okay, so I've cut out quite a few of my shapes and I've had a little bit of play with how I might compose them, but I don't like it. So I'm gonna start by just flipping everything over and going again. And this is something that you might wanna practice with your students. So just because you've placed something somewhere, doesn't mean that's where it has to stay. So I've spread out my collage pieces across the page for my first round of playing. And now I think I'm going to have them really nice and close together and overlapping together so don't mind me I'm going to continue placing things around and this is a very valuable part of the process even if it does take a little bit of time but you do want your composition to be something that you're happy with so let your students play with things if they're not quite happy with it just take it all away start again 
cut out more shapes if you need to. Uh, you could let your students swap shapes as well if you have students working with different colour palettes and your students are thinking, well, things just aren't kind of working with what I've got, then maybe they need to introduce some different colours to make their work stand out or maybe some different shapes with the leaves that they're working with. So that can all help. So consider that when you're thinking about your final composition, but make sure that you do try out some different things before sticking with the first thing you try. Okay, so I think I'm happy with my composition. I've got my leaves laid over the top of each other, which I think looks quite nice. So what I'm going to do now is start pasting them down for the areas that I'm happy with. It's definitely better to start with your larger shapes and pasting them and then working back over the top. So you might have to shuffle some things around as you go. Okay, so I've cut out some more leaves, I've collaged more over the top of each other. This kind of project looks really nice if you can continue to add on, build those layers, build those shapes around your composition. But for this particular artwork, I'm happy with some of this negative space and on the outside because you really get those nice blocky cuts from your collage prints. So this is a great activity for junior primary students people who want to explore texture, who want to experience printmaking, potentially first printmaking experience using the gel plate. It's a great way to lead into those skills, those techniques, and then build on into more in-depth artworks with more details. But this is just a fun way to explore printmaking, explore collage, and even how combining colors might work with painting. So lots of different areas of focus within this one topic, this one unit of work that can span either one lesson or two lessons, depending on how much play you want your students to engage with in their art making. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time.